Hello, it's Kim here with a Herb of the Month being filmed in February in the Northern Hemisphere. So just twist that, uh, tip that over if you're in the Southern Hemisphere to looking for this plant. Um, and I'm going to do it on this. It's, I've just picked this from the garden, but it's just starting to wilt because it's quite a, uh, f you know, fluid rich plant. So it's um, wilting. Um, but for those of you who've already noted it, it is, it's cleavers, um, which is its common name where I live. Uh, lots of other, other colloquial names, which I'll go through in a moment, but its Latin name is Galium aparin. So coming up now, it actually starts to grow December time. I saw it coming up one, two centimeters and it doesn't get destroyed by the frost. It will keep going and it will keep growing and growing, and growing and it weaves its way through the hedgerows um, and the brambles and it will get to quite a quite a great length, you know, six foot, eight foot quite easily. Uh, and you can um, then just pull it out. So so let's first of all look at its its botany on its leaves and stems. And on the seed heads when they come, there's these little hooks uh, all, all over. And that's why it will cling. So those of you who know um, its other names, it's a great, you know, it's doing its seed dispersal job. So A, it's helping the plant grow and cling on through the hedgerows. But then it's also ensuring that as animals pass or humans pass, those seeds get picked up and scattered. So it's an annual. So that means every year those seeds fall to the ground and hopefully they grow and reproduce. So year to year, an annual annual plant. It's part of the Rubidaceae botanical family. I'm never quite sure whether I pronounce those names right. So that's the same family that we find... Um, other plants in the northern hemisphere, things like ladies bed straw, wood ruff, sweet wood ruff, and it's also part of coffee. Coffee's in the same family. And there's a curio little story for you. The seeds are, are said to be a good coffee substitute. I have never done it, um, uh, but I know bushcraft people have, have done it. So if you've got the time and effort, you gather up all those little seeds, roast them lightly over a fire um, and grind them and you'll have yourself a good coffee substitute. So maybe when we get all really poor and the coffee beans are no longer coming into the country. We'll all be dashing out to do that with the um, cleaver seeds. OK, those of us who are coffee addicts know what we want. I'm first of all, though, before I go through its names, its other common names, I'm going to just read lovely Nicholas Culpepper quote, who probably wrote this around, well, 1653. He wrote The English Physician and Culpepper's Herbal, and he was very passionate about people having access to knowledge of how to use plants. Uh, so things were written in English so that the apothecaries and the people could access knowledge about how to treat themselves and not have it all hidden behind sort of a wall of expensive experts. Um, you know, he had a lot to say about kind of the abusive um, physicians who wrote everything in Latin and um, hid their knowledge and charged a lot of money. So anyway, but he was he wanted people to be able to look after themselves, have their health in their own hands, basically. So that's something I'm very passionate about uh, promoting as well. It's part of sharing these little videos about the plants. So he wrote, I'll just read it out. It is a good remedy in the spring. spring eaten, being chopped first, first, small and boiled well, in a water gruel to cleanse the blood and strengthen the liver, thereby to keep the body in health and fitting it for that change of season that is coming. Brilliant. Spring tonics, that's exactly where we're at. Um, and what do we mean about that? It's just uh, to say that these, this notion of spring tonics, after the winter, you know, we may be being a bit slow and sluggish. We haven't been probably doing so much physical work. We've been inside, maybe carbohydrate dense foods so we're wanting like the earth the earth's warming up the plants are getting busy we need to be up and active as well and getting all the organs cleansed and moving so it very much falls in 
to that realm and we'll come on to how we can use it in a moment but let's look at all those other different brilliant names and I'll read them again out because there's so many I can never remember them all but so you know we've got cleavers and clivers so they're alluding I think you know, to its its attachment its clinging on process um, goose grass some of you might know it by so that's indicating that geese do actually really like it and I think sheep and horses and cattle will have a propensity to go and eat it if they can find it uh, away from our monoculture fields and then we've got um, other names like grip grass that's again alluding to its clinging nature robin run in the grass so that's you know it's how it weaves through um, it, the growing structures a sticky willy uh, everlasting friendship so again uh, you know that clinging on notion and I think it's the cleavers actually well cleavers sorry gallium aparin you know it comes from aparin the Greek aparin to seize and also it's anglicized from the Greek phila philanthropin so like man's friend you know to, to, to attach on um, and then there's all these other names like hedge herif hayrif erif hayruff um these are alluding, these are Saxon words, colloquial Saxon words, because that riff bit is relating to the word reeve, tax collector, you know, tax robber. And that's just an aside, that's what I quite find fascinating about Anglo Saxon um, words, English, is the Saxons, Anglo Saxons were agricultural people very much living and working in the natural landscape so a lot of the words reflect their relationship their working relationship their observations of the natural world um, so I think there's quite a lot of poetry in that as far as I'm concerned um, what other names have I missed out um, mutton chops did I say um, grip grass uh, yeah, everlasting friendships. So again, just lovely plethora of names. And maybe, you know, you'll you'll have some of your own as well. So again, you know, it's describing how it's growing, its nature, its tenacity to love us. So any of us who've got dogs, cats, ourselves, if we're gardeners, if we've ever, when we've been around that plant, we know that it will cling on. I think kids at school used to f um fling fling the stems at each other and then the seeds you know you'll find them in the dog's coats the cat's coats or clinging to your you know your jumpers when you've come in from the garden working um, around the the plant when it's in seeds so let's go through some of its actions so we'll list those off and then come maybe back to some more detail with some of those so it's what we call it's um a diuretic flush the kidneys make you wee it's a lymphatic and i'll actually do that in a bit more detail because that's one of its really interesting actions it's um, an alterative or a, a tonic so we're, we're back into this zone that that if our bodies are out of whack it will bring you know it helps the body get back into balance and that whole notion of tonics i think which has got a bit of old hat these days in modern medicine but there's this notion isn't there that if we use things use these plants and use our food stuffs um as a prevent you know to prevent ourselves getting ill you know rather than leaving things until uh they're a, they're a real problem you know we eat things things and we keep ourselves in well-being i think this is a really personally a really important way of attending to our health rather than waiting till acute situations or very deep-seated chronic problems and when we expect then someone else to do something for us with a pill let's take care of ourselves right here right now eat well use the plants around us so let's come and look at that lymphatic notion so without getting too um uh, medically bogged down you know in western medicine we break the body down into compartmentalized systems so if we talk about the lymphatic system we also just have to think about the cardiovascular or the the arterial and venous system a bit so bear with me a moment so if we if you know how your body the blood travels around your body uh, you know in large large vessels you know the arteries and they get smaller and smaller until you get to capillaries which basically are taking a one blood cell at a time and that's going to release the red blood cells is going to release uh, its oxygen and release the nutrients you know 
and so that will move out to the surrounding organs and tissues and then the surrounding organs and tissues through their cellular activity are going to release their their waste load um, and then that gets picked up by what we call the lymphatic system so it kind of runs alongside this the the, the capillary system it's like a, a fairly clearish fluid and it kind of will gather and gather up until you've got the vessels which get into larger so you, you know your lymph nodes you'll know about those if you know if you ever kind of like had a sore throat you know or an infection you know, at certain times you can feel the lymph nodes are swollen around your body and this is because basically the um the guardsmen the white blood cells who are working a lot there's different calibers of white blood cells but they've got different actions they're going you know there's an invader here there's an illness you know there's a bacterial problem or a viral problem they kind of they're then Con, um, congregating, congesting around in the lymph nodes and dealing dealing with the um, invaders. So um, in terms of the, the lymphatic system, you've got these small vessels and it's also composed of um, things like your thymus gland, your spleen, um, your tonsils, your adenoids, you know, they're all part of the, um, the lymph nodes. Um, yeah, your bone marrow, um, these are what we all put in that box of the lymph nodes so it's it's vital to a healthy functioning immune system um, and they regenerate cells and they identify invaders in the lymph system so or you know the lymphatic system all the components in it so when we say something like cleavers is a lymphatic it's working on all sorts of levels in this way it's, it's helping the body with invaders it's helping that regeneration process it's helping that cleansing process so marvelous marvelous um uh, uh it will you know clear things it will it will shrink cysts it will shrink you know tumorous things um it will deal with swollen glands uh also diuretic you know if there's any problems with the urinary tract system you know things like cystitis or bladder irritation etc it helps clear that out um so and it's let's now go on to how you can use it easy peasy go out go out and find it uh if you've got a garden or you know it does go along the hedgerows and footpaths just make if it's a well trod footpath obviously always try and not pick where there's pollutants um you know from uh, you know vehicles or or animals but you know you just need to take so it's really drooping now poor plant but you know three or four or five tips snip it up put it in a teapot put your boiling water on let it infuse steep you know let it sit there you can have it on its own you can add in other spring tonic herbs that are coming up that would be something like nettle which i've i'm pretty sure i've done a video about nettle uh what else there's things like the, the evergreens the rosemary and the sage are around that would be you can add that in there's no harm in that and you can drink that quite freely it's got a fairly bland taste i really like it um re really nice i mean i just other ways you can use it sometimes i like i put it in with my green tea so you know be um, experimental, adaptable with how you use it. Don't be frightened. So it's really beautiful for clean, cleansing our system. And there's always cleansing that needs doing after spring. Um, you know, if you've had lots of infections, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have been very troubled with their feeling their immune systems not working so well these days. Can't think why. Um sadly you know we've put something into our bodies that has challenged our uh, particular component of our um, immune system so we need to see if we can reboot that and i very much think this herb is in that camp of helping that system reboot itself and help the body be re-enlivened so and you can drink that you know once a day or as and when or you know if you're wanting to um be a bit more diligent you can you know do it two or three times a day will be plenty it's also i should add in so it will make you wee a bit more uh it will also help regulate appetite there's lots of old literature talking about you know people who've got rather robust appetite so it's what we call an apparent is going to suppress um suppress overeating which is no bad thing for certain people which i include myself in um 
so yeah lovely gentle herb lots of it around throughout this video hopefully i've popped some pictures up of it growing i mean it's like a little green forest at the moment you know anywhere but sort of between four and ten centimeters it's starting to grow and those of you who are walkers or gardeners you'll know that it will then just weave its way through whatever hedge or plant matter it can find you can very easily you know if you're a garden pull it out and put it on the compost if you're not going to make your tea from it um yeah so i say it's an annual so it that those seeds drop to the ground and then every year it grows again and to add in sorry if you want to know about the the roots are quite tiny but you if you're a dye into dying or want to learn more about dying you gather up the roots good luck it's a lot of collecting uh and it yields a red dye which is rather fun to know um what else can i tell you i think you just need to go out and have your spring um cup of cleavers and to say if you're in the southern hemisphere i mean it's a northern hemisphere plant but it's got transported around the globe i think now I, when i lived in new zealand i can remember it growing very freely there and even greater in length um with all that rain and sunshine so learn about cleavers it's a good herb it's a good herb especially to have fresh you can juice it actually i should say that yeah it's good you can put it in a juicer or if you would just yeah really want to get <laughs> i'm a lazy herbalist do you really want to do all that physical labor of crushing it but um you can if you want to do that thing so fall in love with cleavers it's a good herb to know very gentle and very apposite for our time of needing tonics for the body to cleanse the body and to help the body recalibrate and be healthy so i hope you're all well um those of you that are in springtime may you be enjoying it uh, the re the rebirth of the world those of you who watch me in the southern hemisphere um have a gentle descent in into the autumn season and remember to follow the rhythms of your body and to listen to your gut instincts and to take care of yourself and those uh, of you uh, those around you who want to know how to keep this precious uh, wisdom alive of how to use the herbs for our health see you again soon i hope <laughs>